impact with something being released, hitting the ground, and then let's say where does it land? We'll make something like that up, okay? So I have here a ball right here with some mass, and I have here an angle. Do you care what the angle is, or do you want me to make it like kind of complicated, like a 30 degree angle? Or do you want it to be like 45? Uh, let's do 30. Let's make it, let's make it interesting. 30 degrees, okay? 30 degrees here, right? And I release from rest. So release from rest. Oops. Rest here at one. And then it impacts at some point here at some height. Let's call this uh, one meter at a height of one meter. And this release height is uh, oh, 10 meters. Okay. Let's call that 10 meters. And then it, it hits the ground, it bounces, so it goes doot, 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 right here. It hits the ground, hits this angle thing, and uh, let's see, let me get rid of some of this stuff so it looks like a clean drawing. Oops, right here, right here, right here, right here, okay. And, and it goes at some, and then it does this business and lands on the ground over here somewhere okay and we want to know what is this distance r okay that seems kind of cool that's interesting all right and uh let's see this height is 10 meters uh, let's see i wonder if I, if i need the mass of the ball i will uh will give it one like one gram one kilogram but let's see if we can do it without the mass because sometimes you know the mass is always just cancel out okay Yeah, we're just gi I'm giving that. Yeah, one meter off the ground, hitting hitting this incline at one meters off the ground. Okay, all right. I, mean, I don't. That is not the height of the triangle. It's uh, it's right here, wherever that point of impact is. Okay. All right, and uh, let's see here. Okay, so um, so I'm given that it releases from rest. So this is all that I'm given actually. This is all I'm given here, and I want to find find. R okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to calculate the velocity before impact okay because you know we want before impact <laughs> okay Be okay so velocity before impact so we want what's going to happen before impact is if I zoom in on this incline over here if I zoom in on the incline here. You know, I've got this right here, this in it, right before impact, I've got this velocity here. Maybe, okay? A straight down. Right, I'm going to say straight down. Velocity. And I'll call it, you know, V. I'll just call it V, okay? And then I'll call it this this velocity here, V0 equals 0, right? Okay? And I'm just going to use the, the uh, conservation of energy to solve for this. The velocity right before, so... Conservation of energy. I'll call this one. I'll call this like uh, the next stage. So I'll have like uh, actually one. I call this zero, and I'll call this one. Okay. So this is zero, and this is one right before impact. So I have uh, T zero plus the kinetic energy plus the potential energy is equal to the um, the kinetic energy plus the potential energy at one, okay? And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna define, let's see, I'm, just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna define this location right here as y equals zero, okay? I'm gonna define that as my reference. That makes this height right here, the height here, that's nine meters, okay? That's nine meters, and so, my potential energy, or my sorry, my kinetic energy at zero is zero because I start from rest. My potential energy is only due to gravity, and this is mgh. The height at zero is equal to the kinetic energy at one right before impact, one half mv one squared, plus the potential energy at that point, which is mgh one but that height is zero so that potential energy is zero so this 
this comes out to a popular result v1 squared equals v1 is equal to square root of 2gh okay that's, that's real popular and and, you know, and this is let's see let's get some numbers here this is square root of 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times 9 so 9 meters and that v1 is 13.3 meters per second. Okay, so from the calculator, you get 13.3 meters per second, and this is downwards. Okay, 13.3 meters per second downwards. So now I, I'm ready to go to my impact problem. I'll go over here for the impact problem. I'll just go over here. And I have this V1 right here at this direction. I'm going to get rid of the little vector symbol because that's really just even though we don't need it, or I'm not going to be super precise. But this V1 here, 13.3 meters per second, okay? I have a, a point of impact here, okay? And so I know that I have, I'm going to have, in terms of the impact, I'm going to have a normal and tangential to the plane of impact. So I'm going to have a tangential to the plane of impact and a normal to the plane of impact, okay? And we define those as plus n and plus t, all right? And I have, I know from here, and then after impact, so I have right before impact and after impact, I've got, if this is before, shoot, let's draw this as before, before, and then after impact, if, I, if, I, if you let me go down here a little bit, after impact, okay? right after I've got again the same plus tangential plus normal right here and I you know I don't know what the angle is or anything so I'm just gonna write it as you know I think it's gonna bounce upwards and to the right okay so but you know I'm just gonna keep it everything in my positive coordinate system so I'm gonna have here v1 prime of n and v one prime of t okay v1 prime of n and v1 prime of t all right okay right is that right that looks right okay and 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 i have here the other thing i have so this should be parallel to the to the plane okay and then i know that this angle is 30 degrees which makes doo -doo -doo, this 30 degrees which which makes this 30 degrees yeah 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 that looks right okay that looks like that looks okay so 30 sure all right so 30 there okay so now I'm going to apply so now I have my impact problem oh and I need some space for equations shoot I should have drawn this drawing like over here on the left but uh, um, I'm gonna apply some equations now um, I have uh, for sure in the T component because there's no external forces exchanged right between the plane and the ball what's conserved momentum is conserved in the T direction so I know that in the T direction m1 v1 T is equal to m oops m v 1 prime so before, so I know this, so I can, I can break this up into its T component, which would be here. This would be V1 T, and then my normal component would here would be V1 N. So this tells me that essentially, because the masses cancel, V1 T is equal to V1 prime of T, which is equal to V1 sine of 30 degrees. And the sine of 30 is, is that one half, or square root of 3 root 2? I always forget. I, I always forget. That's a half. Yay! So here, that's just. This is just going to be 13.3 meters per second divided by two, which is something like uh, 6.65. Yeah, 6.65 meters per second. Okay. All right. All right. V1t, and then, and then in the n direction. I can't I can't conserve momentum of the system because well because I just I can't get a grasp of like hitting this incline and the earth you know right 
I, I, I just can't, I just can't. So the only thing I have, oh, I need a coefficient of restitution. So that's something that's missing, okay? All right, so let's say that the, so go, oh, let's go back here and let's say another given component here would be that the coefficient of restitution is equal to, let's say, 0.8, okay? Let's say E is equal to 0.8. And in the end direction, then we have this coefficient of restitution, E, so in the end direction, we would apply this coefficient of restitution equation. And this is, I would have E is equal to V1 prime N minus some other particle, uh, we'll call that V0 prime of N over V0 prime of N, V0, oops of before impact, V0 of N minus V1 of N, okay? So essentially the re relative velocities after impact and the relative velocity before impact of the particles that are colliding. But in this case, because the, the plane and the earth is not, as for us, is not moving with respect to this, so this is zero and this is zero. And then we would have here, uh, V1 prime of N is just V1 prime of n over v minus oops over negative of v1 prime of n and here oops let's go back over here this v1 prime of n oh my bad i'm sorry v1 oh i messed up oh no v1 sub n v1 of n this v1 of n Wow, this is a long example. V1 of n is just V1 cosine of 30 degrees, okay? And and this is in the negative n direction, so we're going to have to write minus V1, minus V1 cos of 30 degrees, okay, is equal to 0.8, all right? And that's just going to tell me that V1 prime of N is equal to, um, shoot, uh, V1 prime of N is equal to 0 0.8 times uh, V1 cosine of 30 degrees. So 13.3 meters per second times the cosine of 30, which I believe is the square root of 3 over 2. Okay? And that is, what does that number come out to? 9.2 meters per second, thank you, okay? And everything is positive. That means the orientations that we've drawn are, are correct, okay? All right, and let me, and let's see if I can do this in the next two minutes. So here I have after impact, after impact, here, 30 degrees. I have the N, V1 prime of N here, and V1 prime of T, which is uh, 6.65 meters per second, and this is 9.2 meters per second, right? And I can define a, a vector here of these two, which would be like this, right? And, and hopefully it's not, and then I would want to find, I would know the angle here you know, let me let me draw this a little bit better so that you can see it, and then I'll I'll, I'll stop this video. This, uh, um, in fact, here I'll.